Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Monaco Crypto Summit presented by Digital Bits. It's a conference where a lot of the people using Digital Bits and the industry are coming together around the future of crypto and the application. We've got a great guest, Raj. Raj Kotia, founder and CEO of an innovative company. Love this, I love this company, Loot Mogul. Raj, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having us, yeah. So I checked out what you guys are doing. You've got the sports metaverse angle going on, which is super valuable, because sports is super entertaining. Uh, people are engaged, there's a huge fan base, huge online now digital convergence going on with the physical. You know, you see all kinds of sports betting going on, now everything's going digital. There's a whole other consumer experience going on with sports. I mean, the game is still the same on the, on the field or, so to, or the court. That's correct, yeah. Now it's going to digital. Take a minute to explain what you guys are working on. Yeah. So yes, we are building out a sports metaverse where we are bringing in athletes, whether they're NBA stars, NFL stars, WNBA, many of those athletes into metaverse, giving them the ownership of the entire um, metaverse commerce along with gameplay. So that's something from our perspective, this, uh, this is something that we're focused on. We're building out stadiums, athletes can own stadiums, athletes can create their own training centers, media hubs, um, and imagine Lisa Leslie, for example, is building out a, a woman leadership sports academy, right? We have Michael Cooper building out defensive academy. So those are all the brands we have, 174 NBA, WNBA stars, and, um, and we are building out the this brand. Is, the brand is the platform. That's correct. That's the trend we're seeing. And it's, it's also an extension of their reach and community, so they can convert their star power and athlete with owner's approval, they probably write it all through the contracts. He says, I can imagine all the complications, but they bring that online and extend that energy and brand equity yep. to fans and social network. Yeah, and many of these athletes are tremendous successful in their Web2 careers, right? Yeah. Um, some are current athletes, some are former athletes, but they have built such a brand persona where people are following them on Instagram. For example, Carlos Boozer, he has like almost six million followers between Twitter and Instagram. And those kind of brands are looking at how do I give back to the community? How do I engage with my community? And Web3, and especially with our platform, we are giving that power back to the players. So you guys got some big names, Boozer's on there, you mentioned Carlos Boozer, you mentioned that Lisa Leslie, others, among others, Michael Cooper, throwback to the old Lakers. Uh, Magic Johnson's kind of actually here in crypto. We just saw him in the lobbies and having dinner the other night um, at Nobu. Um, you got a lot of NBA support. Take a, take, can you explain how you're working this angle? Um, you got some great traction, uh, momentum. Um, you got a great pedigree, Riot Games, in your career. Uh, you kind of get the world, the tech world, the media world, as it comes together. What's the secret sauce here? Is it the NBA relationship, combination yeah. of the team? Explain. It's really focusing on what, uh, we are building out a metaverse, focusing on players first, right? So players are literally, we call our platform as uh, owned by the players, made for the players, uh, and engagement is really all done through the players, right? So that's our key sauce. And when we worked out with NBA, we, we are part of the NBA, NBPA acceleration program for 2022 that is funded by A16Z uh, and, and many others. Um, and our partnership with league is very critical. So it's not only partnering with uh, player association, partner with leagues, whether it's NBA, WNBA, NFL, so those are the venues, and this becomes almost a program, especially for athletes to really generate this lifetime engagement and royalty model. Because some of these famous athletes really want to give back to the communities. So like, for example, I use Lisa Leslie a lot, but Lisa Leslie really wants to empower women uh, leadership and really yeah. help um, women in sports, for example, right? So those are the angles that, um, that really people are excited about. Well, for the people watching that might not understand some of the ins and outs of sports and, and Raj, your background, your team, it's interesting. The sports teams have been on the big data train for many, many years. You look at all the stadiums now, they got mobile devices, got Wi-Fi under the chairs. They use data and technology to manage the team, mm -hmm. manage the stadium and venue and operations, suppliers, whatnot, and then also the fans. So you, they got about a decade or so experience already in the digital world. This is not new to the to the sports world. Yep. So you guys come to the table kind of at a good time. Yeah, especially the DeFi of the sports, right? So there's a DeFi of the finance, but this is the really uh, a, a decentralization of the sports is something that there's a lot of traction. And there are many companies that are really focusing on that. Our focus obviously is players first, right? How do we give power to the players? Uh, and those are really driving the entire engagement, 
and also the brands. How does the NBA feel about this? Because you know, you get the NBA and you get the team, you get the owners. I mean, the democratization of the players, which I love, by the way, that angle, kind of brings their power. Now it's a new kind of balance of power. How is the NBA handling this? What's some of the conversations you've had with the, uh, yeah. the organization? Yeah. So obviously there are a lot of things that uh, people have to be careful about, right? They have existing contracts, exi exi existing digital media rights. Um, so that's something that uh, we have to be very tactful when we are working with NBA and NBPA uh, on what we yeah. can say, we cannot say. So that is obviously yeah. there a lot of existing multi-million or billion dollar contracts that they cannot void with the web because of the evolution of Web3. You know, I love uh, riffing on the notion of contract compliance <laughs> when there's major structural change happening. Yeah. Remember back in baseball, back in the days before the internet, the franchise rights was geographic territory. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're the New York Yankees, you're doing great. If you're Milwaukee, you're not doing too good. But then comes the internet. That's correct. That's no geography, there's no boundaries. That's correct. So yeah. you're going to have stadiums, you're going to have virtual boundaries. So again, how do they keep up with the contracts? Yeah. I mean, this is going to be a fundamental issue. That's correct. And yeah. I think if they don't move, the players are going to fill that void. That's correct, yeah. And especially with this, this NIL deal, right, that happened for the players, uh, especially college athletes. So we are in the process of onboarding 1.5 million college athletes. Uh, and those athletes are looking for, not only paying for the tuition for their colleges, but also for engagement and generating this early on. Uh, okay, Raj, we're going to make a prediction here in theCUBE. 2020, we're in Monaco. All the NBA, NHL, the teams, they're going to be run by player DAOs. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> a very good prediction, yeah. <laughs> very good prediction, I mean, yeah. I mean, you can, I mean, that's a joke, I'm joking aside. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of connecting the dots, but you know, whether that happens or not, what this means is if this continues to go down this road, that's correct, yeah. the players collectively could come together yeah. and flip the script. Yeah, and that's the entire decentralization, right? So it's like the Web3 has really disrupted this industry, as you know. Um, and, and I know your community knows yeah, that too. Of course, it's, we do, we love it. It's something from sports perspective. <laughs> we are very excited. Well, I love it, love talking. Let's get into the, to the weeds here on the product under the hood. Talk about the roadmap, obviously NFTs are involved. That's kind of sexy right now. I get the digital asset model on there, uh, but there's a lot more under the covers. You've got to have a platform, you've got to have the big data, and then ultimately align into connecting other systems together. How do you view the tech roadmap and the product roadmap? What's your vision? Yeah, so the, the one thing that you have to be tactful uh, as a company, whether it's Loot Mogul or any other startup, is you have to be really part of the ecosystem. So the reason why we are here at Monaco is that we obviously are looking at partnership with Digital Bits, um, and those kind of partnership, whether it's sports-centric, metaverse-centric, are very critical for the ecosystem and the community to grow. Um, and that's one thing you cannot build a another uh, isolated metaverse, right? So that's one thing. Many companies have done it, but obviously not. It's a walled garden, doesn't work. Exactly, so you have to be more open platform. So one thing that we did early on in our platform, we have open APIs and SDKs, where not only you as an athlete can bring in your uh, other e-commerce or Web3 uh, NFTs or anything you want, but you can also bring in other real estate properties. So when we are building out this metaverse, you start with real estate, then you build out obviously stadiums and arenas and academies, training academies, yeah. but then athletes can bring their yeah. uh, web commerce, right? Whether it is NFT, wearables, shoe line, clothing So you're looking line. at an ecosystem on That's top correct. of Luke. So you're like, I'm almost like, you think about a platform as a service on a cloud computing paradigm. Yeah. A little different, not, not decentralized, but similarly you're enabling others do the heavy lifting on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that right? So yeah, that's correct, yeah. So we are calling ourselves as the sports platform as a service, right? So we want to add the word sports, <laughs> because right. we, uh, in, in many contexts, right, when you're building metaverse, you can yeah. get distracted with them, especially we are in Los Angeles, right? right can so I get a luxury box for the cube and some of the metaverse islands and the stadiums you're doing? We, we are working on it, <laughs> we are definitely working on it, especially the, the, uh, the Los Angeles uh, stadium, yeah. yeah. Well, we're looking for some hosts. Anyone out there looking for some hosts uh, for the metaverse? Bring your avatar, you can host theCUBE. Raj, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. What's, the, what's next for you guys? Obviously, continue to build momentum, you got your plate full. How many people on the team? What's going on? Give a plug for the company. What are you looking for? Share with the audience some of, the, yeah. some of your goals. Yeah, so uh, the main thing we are looking for is really, um, from a brand perspective, if you are uh, looking at buying properties, this would be an amazing time to buy virtual sports stadium. Um, so we are obviously, we have uh, 175 stadiums in roadmap right now. We started with Los Angeles, then we're adding San Francisco, New York, Qatar, Dubai. Uh, so all those sports stadiums, whether they're basketball, football, soccer, uh, are all the properties. And uh, from a community perspective, if you want to get an early access, we are all about giving back to the community. Uh, so you can buy it at a much better pre-sale price right now. 
so that's one. The second thing is that if you have any innovative ideas or a player that you want to integrate into, we have a very open platform from a community engagement perspective. If you have something unique from a land sale perspective or yeah. the NFT perspective, contact us at, at raj at lootmogul.com. And I'm right? assuming virtual team, you in LA area, where's, where's your home? So yeah, so I live in Malibu um, and our office is in Santa Monica. We have an office in India. Uh, we have a few developers also in Europe. So, uh, and then we are a team of 34 people right now. You're looking to hire some folks? We are looking for what are you? Expanding. What are you looking for? So uh, we are looking for a passionate sports uh, fanatics. That's a lot, not hard to find. Yeah, <laughs> who knows how to also code, right? So the, from blockchain perspective, we are uh, chain agnostic, uh, but obviously right now we are building on Polygon, but we are chain agnostic. So if you have any blockchain development experience, uh, that's something we, we are All looking right. for, yeah. Raj, thanks for coming on Loot Mogul. Check them out. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE here in Monaco for the Monaco Crypto Summit, presented by Digital Bits. We've got all the action, a lot of great guests going on. Stay with us for more coverage. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.